Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus asks, do you love me? Of course we do. We respond with Simon Peter. Let us then respond with that love in our worship this morning. Please join me in the call to worship using the words found in your bulletin. O oh Lord our God, we praise you. You have restored our lives. You have rescued us from the grave. Now let us sing the opening hymn, number 839, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, my God. 
be seated. <coughs> Sin and shame confu- confuse us and lead us astray. And the risen Christ welcomes us with his redeeming love time and time again. Let us confess our sins to God using the unison prayer for forgiveness which is printed in your bulletin. Lord God, in the light of your glory, We see the evil we have done, the suffering we have caused, the good we have refused, and the truth we have denied. Heal us of our sin, wash us in your mercy, and feed us with your grace, so that we may follow your way and tell the good news of the gospel. Christ transforms, Christ redeems, and Christ renews. Through Christ's death and resurrection, we are a new creation, ready to sing of God's glory and testify to God's grace. Friends, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And I'll invite, I think all the children are here. I'm going to come to y'all. The children's time. How are y'all doing? Join the return of the table. I see. Yeah, good, good. Um, so this morning's story is another story about Jesus. Um, after the resurrection, he comes back to see his friends, and he actually has breakfast on the beach, which I think is really appealing. I used to live in Miami and went to a church kind of the sli- kind of like Trinity, and on this Sunday we would sometimes actually go to the beach after worship and have brunch, which was a fun perk of living in Miami, Florida, but um, there's a really cool interaction between Jesus and Peter, one of his friends, Um, and Peter actually, you might remember this from the story before Jesus died, Peter, um, a few times people ask, do you know Jesus, weren't you friends with Jesus, and and Peter says, no, no, I don't know him, Um, and and he realized that he kind of betrayed Jesus um, by by saying that he doesn't know him. But the neat part about the story is that Peter is there at that breakfast, and Jesus gives him the chance to forgive him and to say, and for him to say that he loves him. Um, And it got me thinking of of how often that might happen. I wonder if you ever um, say something mean, maybe accidentally, to each other or to your parents or to a classmate or a friend, um, and wonder how on earth am I ever going to get this person, yeah, to, to love me again, yeah. Yeah, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is a great way to learn and think a little more about God's love and God's power um, and how there are even characters in that story, right, that, um, that take the witch's side. Yeah, yeah. Like, Edmund. like Edmund, yeah. But, um, but, but Aslan still 
still sees Edmund and loves Edmund, right? That's kind of what's happening in this story. It's a really special lesson for us to learn um, that Jesus does that for us. Um, it's why we confess our sin every Sunday, as we know we did maybe some, some bad or ni- nice things each week, but we know that no matter what, Jesus still loves us, that Aslan is still um, the, the ruler of that land, just as Jesus is still our God and still loves us. That's good news. Thanks. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for giving us second and third and fourth and endless chances to be good people and to love each other and to love you. We thank you. Amen. Thanks, y'all. And you're going to just hang out at the table if that sounds good with you. Okay. (laughs) Um, We're going to sing our hymn of gathering, number 721, Lord, you have come to the lake shore. As we approach God's word, let us pray for the spirit to illumine our hearts and minds together. O God of light, by the power of your Holy Spirit, restore our sight 
that in these words of scripture and toward we may see Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Our first reading comes from Psalm 30. Listen for God's word to you. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to you, the Lord, I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The word of the Lord. Our second reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Listen again to the word of God. 
After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, well, we will go with you. And they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far away from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you, because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. The second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After he said this to him, Jesus said, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A story of grace. Jesus invited his friends to a meal during the Passover. Simon Peter was one of the guests around that supper table, and after Jesus passed the bread around the table, and they'd each taken a bite, and he passed his goblet of wine around the table, each one taking a sip, Jesus said, this will be my last time doing this with y'all until we can reunite in heaven. This simple feast of bread and wine was strange, but Peter knew it felt significant. How long would he have to wait to dine with Jesus again? Whatever the answer, he knew he'd better not mess this up. He wanted to be a part of that forthcoming feast. And after the meal, Jesus did another strange thing. He took a bowl of water and sat down in front of Peter. And this was too much for Peter. There was no way his Lord was going to serve him in such a way. He refused to physically look down upon Jesus as he washed his feet. Jesus tried to explain to Peter, I know you don't understand why I'm doing this, but I promise it will be a little more understandable farther along. Farther along, you will understand why. But Peter insisted, no, you will never wash my feet. 
In fact, he communicated this refusal three separate times to Jesus. Three is an important number in Peter's story. It was also three times that Simon Peter denied knowing Jesus after the Roman authorities arrested Jesus. In the cool of the evening, Peter stood around a communal fire, rubbing his hands together and warming his body with the heat of the flames. A woman who was someone's servant was also by the fire, and she looked up and realized he looked familiar to her. She asked, hey, aren't you one of that man's disciples? I'm not, Peter replied, and he looked down at the fire, hoping the interrogation would be finished right there. One. The person who hired the woman returned, and so she left with them to return home for the evening, and the tension in Peter's body relaxed just a little bit at her departure. He continued to breathe hot air into his hands with a couple of guards looking around the circle, And one of them nudged the other and gave a look to say, I swear he was in that crowd that one day when Jesus the Nazarene was teaching. I think he even traveled there with him. The other one silently nodded and cleared his throat and asked, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? And Peter quickly, with a little more of a defensive tone this time, replied, I am not. Two. There was another man who was actually Malchus's cousin. He and Malchus had been commanded by Caiaphas, the high priest, to arrest and bring Jesus back to the courtyard. And in that frenzy of the rest, a man, presumably one of Jesus's buddies, took out a sword and cut off Malchus's ear. A man who worked under the high priest heard the brief interaction as mind flashed back to that moment of his cousin's ear being cut off in the chaos and realized that he recognized Peter as the one who had done it. He said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? And Peter denied it again, and immediately a rooster crowed. Three. That bird's call was like a bell chiming at the top of the hour for Peter, his hour, his time of once again denying Jesus had arrived. He'd wondered if he'd ever be invited back to that feast about which Jesus had spoken in the upper room. Why should he be invited? Why should he be on that VIP list? What did he really deserve after all? After all of the events of the arrest and the crucifixion had occurred, Peter and his friends weren't quite sure what to do. They knew that Jesus had hopes for them to continue the work that he had started. They had heard and seen of his resurrection. But Peter also knew that he had offended Jesus, that he'd somehow contributed to the success of the plot to execute Jesus. And many of them were left wondering, is there still hope for us? Is that love that Jesus, the good shepherd, the son of God, taught us, is that love still available for us? In an attempt to get back to the roots of who he was, Peter told a few of them that he was going fishing and that they were welcome to join him. He wasn't sure how to or even if he should continue to hold the name of one of Jesus' disciples. But what he did know how to do was how to fish He'd hoped that the familiar rock of the boat would lull him back to remembering who he was at the core of his being. Perhaps with their hands busy and their minds a little more available in the dark of the night, perhaps their little friend group could decide once and for all what they were to make of their lives. But alas, they sat in the boat all night, never feeling that weight of their nets rock the boat to one side. Feeling even more hopeless, they rowed back to the shore when the sun began to peek over the horizon. As they got closer to land, they saw a man standing still, watching them. I wonder what this is about, one of them said to Peter. When they got close enough for the man to talk to them, he said, didn't catch any fish all night. They shook their heads, hoping he would just leave them alone and let them return to their quiet hopelessness. But the man suggested that they try placing their net on the other side of the boat this time. 
trust me, he said. So perhaps because they had nothing to lose, they trusted the man. And sure enough, their net quickly filled with so many fish that they were not able to pull it up and place it in the boat. Confused but delighted, Peter and his friends looked back up at the man who now had a soft smile on his face, and one of the men said, It is him. It is the Lord. It's our resurrected teacher. Peter's heart skipped a beat. For days now, he'd convinced himself that Jesus had no reason to return to him, that he'd lost his invitation to be part of the movement, that he had too many strikes against him to be included in the move toward righteousness and justice. After hearing the stories of their colleagues meeting the resurrected Jesus, Peter had tried really hard to sit down and think about the perfect words with which to apologize should Jesus return to Peter himself. But he was never able to find those perfect words. They were full of excuses and distractions that surely Jesus would see through and not accept. Not knowing what he would say, Peter dove into the water and he swam as fast as he could. And when he got to the shore, he threw himself down on the sandy ground arms stretched in front of him, forehead touching the sand, attempting to catch his breath while speaking with his body to Jesus that he would do whatever it would take to be back in Jesus' circle. Jesus bent down and patted Simon Peter's wet hair. I have prepared breakfast for us. Won't you take some time this morning to eat with me? Peter's eyes welling with tears, realizing that he'd just been invited to recline around another table with his Lord, beckoned for his friends to help him bring the fish to the fire that Jesus had begun. And then Peter experienced a sort of deja vu when Jesus passed around a loaf of bread to each person, and when he did the same with the fish. Again, his eyes welled with tears and his skin was covered in goosebumps at this realization. And later, while they were still around the table, but one of the friends was telling a story about another fishing success in his past, Jesus took the chance to turn to Simon Peter and he quietly asked him, Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. One. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Two. Do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Three. Then feed my sheep, Jesus instructed him. Three times. Three times Jesus gave Simon Peter the chance to confess his adoration for Jesus. Three times to unravel the three times Peter had the chance to deny his adoration. Three times to replace the three times Peter refused Jesus' foot-washing ritual. Peter may not have had the words for it that morning, but that was grace. It was a signal to Peter that there was nothing he could do that would separate him from the love of his Lord, Jesus. Grace for Peter and for us was a table set, a seat available at one more simple feast with Jesus. Grace was the invitation, the reminder, to keep moving in the world out of love for God and God's children, to feed the good shepherd's sheep to show them the same grace that was bestowed upon Simon Peter himself. A poem, Brokenness, by Uli Kai. I have so much to give with my overflowing heart. Sun-drenched soul, hands full, Mind exploding with a thousand and one ways to make a difference, to leave a legacy, to build something a little greater than mediocrity. But sometimes I don't know where to start. Being wounded has its downfalls, 
and its advantages. I want to stumble madly and unreservedly into pouring every ounce of me towards all of the things that spread joy, like rainfall in dry places, that bring to life the fallen and the hopeless, and the ones filled with more darkness than light. But the woundedness in me has two voices. One voice that says I must use my brokenness to reach others. And one that says my brokenness is the very reason I'm disqualified. Being wounded, being broken, which all of us are, has its downfalls and its advantages. May we use that very brokenness to reach others, to extend a gesture of grace, just as the Lord has done for all of us. All glory be to the Creator Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. In response to God's word for us, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we together affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed, which is written on our hearts and printed in the bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. By God's generosity, let us give back. Let us offer our gifts to God and to Christ's church.
Savior, responding to your love and grace, we offer our gifts of time, talent, and service. May our offerings feed and tend to your sheep. Amen. You may be seated. The prayers of the people will be included in the communion liturgy. Um, so before we approach the table, um, we'll do prayer requests now. One thing, one person to add to our list um, from this week, Dwayne Lyon uh, right now is wrestling with bacterial pneumonia. Um, he is at home. They are not ready for company at the moment, but they have asked for our prayers. Is there anything else? Anyone else? All right. According to the prophet Isaiah, the day is coming when the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich foods and well-aged wines. On that day, the Lord will destroy the shroud of death that is cast over the whole earth. God will take away the disgrace of the people and wipe away the tears from all faces. God will swallow up death forever. This is is the day of resurrection. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in this salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. In every time and every age, O oh God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks, for your mercy is sure and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion, you gave us Christ Jesus, who sets us free from death and leads us to life eternal. And so with all creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures great and small, with sun and moon and stars, and with the saints of every age, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage. Thwart the designs of evil. Show the way through the wilderness. Turn hardship into righteousness. And reveal your hand upholding the just. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came among us to feed and heal and teach to confuse the deceivers, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things to give hope to those who long for peace. And blessed are you, O Spirit, giver of life. You give us words when we have none. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher today and always. Liberate us, O oh God, and deliver us from all that stunts our growth and is indifferent to our flourishing. May those who encircle us listen well, challenge us justly, and believe in the potential you planted in us. May our habits and heartaches that stop us short and dim our light not consume or distort us. May we be willing to stand exposed before you, saving God, hiding nothing, so we can receive everything. Come now, O Prince of Peace, Spirit of Love, Breath of Life. Bring to all this hurting world the joy that Mary knew, 
and teach us to proclaim with her, I have seen the Lord. In the unity of the Holy Trinity, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is, now and forever. As Jesus teaches us, let us pray to the God who gives us birth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and he praised you, God of all creation. And he broke the bread among the disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. And when the supper had ended, he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to you, God of all creation. And he passed a cup among his disciples. And he said, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant that is sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Table is ready. I invite the servers to come forward. Continue to have um, prepackaged communion as well as gluten free wafer offer, offer, opportunities on the communion table um, right here. So if you need that, you are welcome to those.
Here at this table, we celebrate resurrection as you, God, feed us with bread and juice. And as much as we might prefer to stay here in this protected place, you send us back to our work. Only it is no longer the same work because we know that you are with us and in us, shaping and transforming us to be your witnesses in the world. Nourished in body, mind, and spirit, may all that we say and all that we do give you glory. Amen. I now invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing our hymn of response, number 513. This is the Feast of Victory. for announcements. If you have something to share with the congregation, I invite you to come forward to the wireless microphone up front. If you're joining us online, please do continue to let us know just a quick comment or reaction. It's good to see your names pop up. The session is meeting this afternoon at 1.30 in the fellowship hall for a regular um, stated meeting. Um, 
I'm Doug Feig. Uh, every Sunday I arrive here early with Bonnie, who comes early to practice with Elizabeth. And to make myself useful, I go to the fellowship hall and I uh, plug in the coffee maker so there'll be coffee for later on. Turn it on? Closer. Okay, is this better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Every Sunday I get here early with my wife. I start up the coffee maker. Uh, I'm not responsible for a fellowship time. I just start the coffee maker. I hate to let you know this, but there's no one signed up to do coffee for the next two Sundays. Uh, I'm perfectly willing to plug in the coffee maker, uh, but be the other people to uh, set out cups, and then when it's over, clean up. So please consider signing up. If you drink coffee on a regular basis, once in a while, you need to help take on that chore. Thank you. On May 22nd, there will be a blood drive. Becky Smith has offered to organize it this time. So mark your calendars, May 22nd, for a blood drive. And I'd like to see, Owen, can you show us what you made today? It looks pretty cool. He's been sitting up front here, and it's kind of fun to see what the kids have done. He made a character out of pipe cleaners. <laughs> and Mary made a butterfly. So the two of them are very creative. So thank you for sharing. And his legs come off too, by the way. So that's fun. Um, and thank you for the flowers every week and the choir every week. Um, it just such an addition to our service, and, and thank you for our visitors of daughters, daughters-in-laws, and so on and so forth. Thanks. Institute for Humanities. Can I get a yay? Yay. yay. Thank you. No one else says yay. I want to make institute announcements at the university. They just kind of sleepy eyeball at me. Uh, Institute for Humanities on May 3rd at 3 p.m. is having a presentation of work in progress that's being done in the humanities right now at Mississippi State. The two presentations are one on the science of sound and how silence came to mean death in American culture. And then the other presentation has a very attractive title including the words bird dogs and old broads. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about women journalists in the state of Mississippi from about 1890 to the 1990s. Um, some of you may know some of those women journalists. Um, and so those, there are just two brief 10-minute presentations to leave lots of room open for questions and conversation. It is on campus, I know. Um, but it will be live streamed on our Facebook page. And if you would like to come to campus and attend this presentation live, talk to me, and I will be very happy to help you with finding locations, parking, or carpooling, et cetera. Thanks. Good morning. Um, quick little Colvin family update. I know people have been kind of wondering where are they? What are they? When are they moving? Um, so just wanted to what up closer. Oh, oh boy. The hello. <laughs> um, I feel eat the mic is what I just heard over there. Anyway, just wanted to update you guys. We're looking at probably the uh, beginning of June, probably transitioning. Mike starts his job here in about three weeks and we have yet to sell our house or find a new one so lots of uh, transitions in our um, in our little family so we could really use your prayers as we navigate the next couple months I'm not quite sure what they're gonna look like but I do anticipate um, having some sort of Trinity gathering um, before we go as a way of um, saying our goodbyes to y'all so I hope um, it might be kind of short notice but uh, if you'll just kind of put that on your brain, uh, that'd be great. Thanks. We're blessed to have our, my, our sister, Emily Lewis, who's a retired critical care nurse in Columbus, Ohio, and our second daughter, Sandy Stoppel, who's the mother of Will. Also, we stopped in Jackson on Tuesday on our way home to see Milo Burnham. And this handsome man came to the door. He's had a haircut, no ponytail. His beard is trimmed. 
and he looked just wonderful. And he really misses everybody here. He misses working in his garden. I said, Milo, they have a garden here where you are. They need to use your talents. Also, when Carol McReynolds Davis passed, Frank invited Shay McDonald and me to come and pick a hat. So this is my Carol McReynolds Davis hat, which I probably don't have room for in my 610 square feet in Pennsylvania. In about a minute and a half, the choir is going to sing the benediction. We're going to sing it through twice. And the second time we sing it, we want you to join us. You've known it. Uh, we've done it for a couple of weeks now, and uh, so join us. It's not an audition for the choir, just join us. Um, we have two tickets to the Legend of Georgia McBride that we're unable to use because we'll be out of town. So if you would like our tickets, see me, and um, we can work that out. Thanks. Please rise in body or in spirit for the charge and the benediction. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Live into the hope of Christ's resurrection. Feed Christ's sheep. May the grace and hope and peace and love of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you now and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. 